I've been watching the automotive industry in China very closely over the past year. And this is the moment in time in which things are starting to shift very, very dramatically. I've been waiting for this moment. I knew it would happen. And it looks as though it has finally arrived. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Nice and sunny and hot. You can see I'm a bit sunburnt today. I was out at my son's BMX racing. They did the state series today, state championships here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, in a place called Shepparton. Not a lot out there except for one very impressive BMX track. The boys both did pretty well, even though they've both been sick. For those of you who don't know, I've got a five-year-old called Cal and an eight-year-old called Jack, and they love BMX riding. They've got a BMX channel called Jack and Cal BMX Kids. I'll put a link to that channel in the description if you want to see them and you want to see me in the videos with them as well. Now, I just want to say welcome to all of you new subscribers. There's been about 7,000 new subscribers over the past few days. Awesome to see you. Obviously, most of you have come over from Sandy Munro's channel. Fantastic. Thank you, Sandy, for sending everyone over. Welcome to all of you. Now, make sure you check out some of the 630 videos we've made over the last six months alone. A lot of those videos, you won't find information about what's in those anywhere else on YouTube and potentially on the internet as well. Some of them are about the Chinese auto industry, a lot of them about Tesla, a lot of them about what is really happening in the automotive industry. And why do I say what is really happening? Well, I think there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that, while well, they represent one brand or they represent one perspective. What I've tried to do is to understand everything that's going on in the industry. So if you wanna know more about what's happening, check out some other videos that I've done. Now, I hope you like the new setup here. Had a few comments from subscribers saying, how about a new background, a new backdrop? I don't like the office you're in. So here it is. Hope you like it. If you don't, too bad. Now, like I said before, the automotive industry in China, well, you know, even though I've been saying it will significantly take over a huge percentage of the, of the global automotive industry for various obvious, very, very obvious reasons. In fact, if people don't think it is, then they're just either stupid or blind. But anyway, even though I've said that, the reality is right now that most cars made in China are sold in China, the world's biggest car market, the world's biggest electric car market by far. Most of them are sold there. Not a lot have been exported. So right now, this idea of the cheap Chinese electric car coming to other countries is, I mean, it is happening but on quite a small scale. But that is all starting to change. A number of different Chinese car brands, including Aura, Neo. Xpeng, you could say Tesla to some degree, considering a huge percentage of their cars are made in China now. But then you've also got Hoson, Chang'an, Cherry, Polestar, Zika, SAIC, and a bunch of others. Now, many of them have said recently, including BYD, NIO, and Xpeng, and others, Aura, that they are going to be selling their electric cars globally very soon. Now, one of the car companies that does sell their electric cars in quite a number of different countries is MG. You can buy MG electric cars now in the UK, in Europe, in Australia, in New Zealand, in various different countries, and they're selling very well. But MG needs more support from other brands for this to truly start happening. And Xpeng has just announced that they will soon deliver half their output to countries outside of China. Vice President and Chairman Brian Gu has said within the last 48 hours, as reported on JustAuto.com. And I believe we're now hitting a tipping point. Why do I say that? Well, one of the world's largest electric car makers, in fact, the second largest, BYD, is planning on an assault of the global car market next year. In fact, they were planning on it now. But the problem is they're selling so many damn cars in China they just can't keep up with the demand in their own home market. So what are they doing? They're building more factories. That's all happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all happening. It's great. But we haven't heard this kind of commitment yet until now. And I think this will open the floodgates. Xpeng is going to deliver half of its cars globally. That means they are committed to exporting those cars. And that means it will happen. Now, Chairman Brian Gu 
said that the company would start exporting cars to Denmark, Sweden, and the Netherlands in 2022. As a company that focuses on global opportunities, we want to be balanced with our contribution of delivery, half from China, half from outside China, in the long run, meaning next year. This was actually in an interview with CNBC. Now, the Guangzhou-based company with a dual listing in New York and Hong Kong is often described as the as a famous US-based EV maker, Tesla's main rival. Is that true? I don't think it is, simply because they don't have the output. Nowhere near the output of Tesla. A company like BYD and Volkswagen, they're currently the biggest rivals to Tesla in terms of electric car output. But does that mean they won't be in the future? Well, they potentially could be. Now, Tesla recently disclosed that China accounts for roughly 23% of its overall sales, which is up from 20% a year ago. Tesla, of course, already has a large international customer base with over 50% of its total sales being outside the United States, according to its third quarter results. Gu did not specify a timeline for Xpeng's foreign expansion plans other than to say it would start happening in 2022. In December of 2020, the Chinese EV manufacturer began shipping cars to Norway. It is not alone. US-listed Chinese car brand Neo recently opened a flagship store in Oslo. Another Chinese automotive giant, BYD, said it aimed to deliver 1,500 EVs to Norway by the end of this year. So they're already on sale in Norway now. Now, there's a number of other electric car companies also selling Chinese electric cars in Europe right now. Chinese companies are clearly interested in the Nordic country, most likely due to strong government support for EVs there. In July, Xpeng made its debut on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in a dual primary listing, bringing the company closer to home. Unlike many other Chinese companies such as Alibaba and NetEase, which have sold shares through a secondary listing in Hong Kong, a dual primary listing means that Xpeng must follow Hong Kong disclosure and corporate governance standards closely. Arguably, the company perhaps opted for this approach following Beijing's crackdown on companies wanting to list in the United States. Now, one notable victim was ride-hailing company Didi, which was investigated by several Chinese regulated bodies a few days after its debut on the New York Stock Exchange. So, here we can see more evidence for what the CEO of Volkswagen, Herbert Diess, is saying is going to happen very soon. He's saying, well, frankly, Chinese cars are going to invade Europe. And that's pretty, pretty good confirmation that it's not just me, it's not just the electric Viking, it's not just Sam Evans saying it's going to happen. If the CEO of Volkswagen is saying it's going to happen very soon and he is afraid that it will happen and that Volkswagen is not in position, not yet at least, to combat that in terms of the cost of their vehicles, then it most certainly is going to happen. Now, I've made a various number of different videos about different car companies launching in Europe, launching in other countries around the world as well, not just Europe, they're coming to many, many countries globally. I believe it's gonna be a very similar scenario to when, remember back in the 60s? Remember when General Motors had, what was it, like 50% of the global automotive market? Japan sold almost no cars in America or Australia, very few in Europe. Remember then when people used to say Japanese cars were crap? And all of a sudden, within the space of about 15 years, the story had totally changed. I believe we're on that precipice right now. And being aware of reality is better than being in denial. Thanks for watching the channel. Look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.